What did we already talk about? It's also on the list of factors. She said something was different. What was different? Anybody? Government budget deficit, right? Greece said their deficit was 3.7%. What was their real deficit? 12%. Ireland, when they bailed out the banks in one year, 27 or 25 or 27 percent in just one year deficit. Okay? They had a fight with the EU whether that's official deficit or not official deficit. The government held for the banks, right? But actually, in reality, it was up around here 27 percent in one year. Okay? So that's a lot of money to spend, okay? For Greece and for Ireland. So, government budget deficit, okay? Uh, and safe haven. Right? Uh, was expected returns in other assets. Maybe people want to invest in German bonds because they're not making good ones in stock. So the German bond was actually getting lower, even though we had a crisis. Okay? The interest rate. So then let's, uh, we're going to talk about the German long term rates and the Greece long term rate for the next year. So first we need to talk about another couple of things uh, affecting. So we're going to talk about the current account. So the output, right? Current account and output. So let's talk about the output factor, expected output. Which country has the current account surplus? In Europe. Germany. Germany, right? Current account, so Germany has usually has a surplus. We're going to look at the graph in a minute and the numbers, right? The other countries, France. Ireland, also surplus usually, right? Ireland, but we can see that some, maybe Greece, we'll have a look in a minute, right? Greece, deficit, okay? You understand current account? Yes. The trade, okay? Uh, productivity, okay? We're going to talk about productivity. Do you understand productivity? Yes. So thinking about the future, okay? But what is productivity? We're going to look at a graph. Yes. Productivity is the amount you can produce. For what? For one unit of money or one unit of time. Okay? How much can you produce? Okay? Are you a productive worker? If I give you one hour to do something, and I give you two hours, it takes you do the same thing, right? You're more productive, more competitive. Productivity, we're talking about competitiveness. Okay, so here we have to think about, we are locked in the exchange rate. Okay, they use the word straight jacket. Okay, locked exchange rate. So, the only thing we can do is we need to decrease the wages, right? To make ourselves more competitive. Or we, we do most of our trade with other EU countries. But we could decrease the value of the euro. Right? A decreased euro can help. But Germany could have inflation. Do you understand? Weaker euro can help. But is a weaker euro going to help Germany? They already have a surplus. No, it's just going to cause inflation. Right? So it can help the periphery with their outside, but the problem for the periphery is where do they do most of their trade? Who does, our, who does Greece do most of their trade with? Euro area countries or countries outside the Euro area? Euro area countries, right? So the only way that we can make ourselves more competitive against the Euro area countries is either leave the Euro or reduce the wages, right? Of our workers. Do you understand the problems? Okay. So, uh, then let's look at some of the data before we make our decision. Uh, so we're going to use this kind of data to make our decision, to help us to make the decision, what's going to happen first to Germany and then to Greece. Okay, so we look at the different graphs. So here uh, we can see Government debt levels, right? This is important. What do we expect? So now we're in 2011, 2012, right? 
uh, what do we expect the government debt levels to go to, right? So we can see 2010, Germany 87%, 2013, 86%. So we expect Germany's government debt to stay more, to get lower, right? Germany might have a budget surplus and reduce its debt, okay? So you might want to write down that number, that can help you when you're making your decision about the Okay, this, now we're in 2015, but for this case, 2013 is the future, we're 2011, end of 2011, right? So, uh, this is the predicted one. So, we're looking at Germany and Greece specifically. Okay, so Germany and Greece is both G, so they're together, right? So Germany is going to go from 87 down to 86. Greece is going to go from 149 to 183. Okay, did you write down those numbers? I don't see writing down the numbers. Why not? That's important information. You have to make a decision. You're uh, Arturo Rodrigo. Okay? If you're Arturo Rodrigo, you're working for the finance company, and you're writing down this information, which is going to help you make your decision. Okay? You're going through the data and writing down the information. Do you understand? Who are you? Are you a student in Suwon University? No, you're not. You're Arturo Rodrigo, working for the finance company. Okay? Do you understand? You can pretend you're in Korea if you want. But you want to, you're working for the Korean government pension fund. Do you want to work for the Korean government pension fund? How do you say Korean government pension fund in Korean? Hmm? Do you understand Korean government pension fund? How do you say it in Korean? Yeah, you're working for the government. Government quality, right? So you have it's your decision, your responsibility about: Am I going to invest in German bonds or Greek bonds? What's going to happen, right? So you're going through the data. Okay, so this is important data, right? Government debt level today. This is like IMF forecasts, IMF things. Okay, government debt level in the future. So write it down. It's going to help you with your decision. You have to make the decision, not me. Okay? Do you understand? So this is, you understand government debt level? Do they have to always write government debt to GDP? No, we know they're talking about government debt to GDP. Okay? Uh, we have the uh, deficit, government deficit. So Germany, just zero, minus 0 0.06, Greece minus 0 0.53. Okay? So we think government spending in Greece will still be minus 0.53 in 2013, next year, okay? But in Germany, just 0 0.6, okay? More data, quantitative data, which helps us to make our decision, okay? So the data source is the OECD. So these are OECD, OECD estimates, okay? Then, Uh, this is just, we can see the, <coughs> we saw this already, that the difference in the yield over the time, okay? This we already, just we can look, this was the problem, right? The European, this is the European Central Bank interest rate. The interest rate was very low from the early 2000s, around 1%. People were getting a lot of loans, buying a lot of houses, right? But they started to panic in 2006. It went from 1% up to nearly 3.75, okay? In just one year, every quarter they put up the interest rate. Okay, so you can understand. Now they know this was a mistake. Are they going to do this again? The U.S. is talking about putting up the interest rate. Are they going to do this next year? No. No, they learned from their mistake, right? If they do this, they can cause a crisis. Okay, and then they said, "Oh no, we made a mistake." Okay. Since that time, the interest rate has been at historical lows. They're afraid to put back up again moment, okay? They say cause another crisis. So the interest rate is very low in the EU. Uh, the euro is getting weaker against the dollar. Since that time it was 1.6 in 2007. It's now down to, it's at another new low today, 10, nearly at parity, nearly down here at 1, where it started in 2000, right? It's come back down to nearly, it's 
Euro is getting weaker. Trend. Uh, <coughs> we can look at the current account balances here. So current account balance, 2010 to 13, Germany and Greece. Uh, here is the GDP growth. Also, in Germany, we expect the GDP to grow at 1.9 percent. In Greece, just 0.5 percent. Okay, so this is GDP growth. Future output, we said, was one factor. Okay, we expect a higher GDP growth in in Germany. And what about the current account balance? For Germany, we expect 5.6 surplus. In Greece, we expect minus 10 deficit on the current account. 2013. Okay. Are you going to remember all those things? No? So I'll just write down quickly. Current CA, 5.6 Germany, minus 10 Greece. Right? GDP, 1.9 Germany, 0.5. Greece, GDP growth, 2013. So this is the, another important factor is the monetary policy or intervention of the European Central Bank. Do you understand the intervention? The central bank is doing QE, intervening in the market. So this is ECB securities market program, buying bonds, securities in the market. Okay? In dysfunctional bond markets. Bond market is, is not working properly, so they're stepping in and buying bonds. So we can see that we're in 2011. They bought a lot of bonds here. Mm, they're still buying a lot of bonds, but it's getting a little bit lower, right? This is billions of euro. So they were spending 20 billion euro here, here 10 billion euro, here 5 billion euro. So is the European Central Bank going to continue to buy the bonds of the Germany or Greece or sorry of Greece or not? Okay, we're here. Looks like they're slowing down their purchase of the Greek bonds, right? Uh, here is an important one. Uh, we can see that uh, the current account on, on the as a percent of GDP, right? We just mentioned Germany <coughs> plus eight, the, the dips minus eight, right? So they're doing a lot of trade. So what's happening is Germany is selling their stuff to hit them, right? They're buying German goods here, right? Germany is exporting; they're importing. Dips are importing, okay? Uh, so we can see that this is based on the exchange rate based on the labor cost. So really this is looking at the labor cost. So labor cost in Germany, you understand labor cost? Yes. So when we started off, this was the labor cost in Spain, in Ireland, and in Germany. Okay? So the labor cost in Germany, we started at 100, actually went down. Okay. Germany actually reduced their labor cost. Okay. This is adjusted for inflation. So it means that the average salary for workers is getting lower. Right? In, the, in Germany, adjusted for inflation. What about Ireland? Very high labor costs. Okay. Increasing the salary of the government workers. Other workers too. And I mean, one of the problems again, we go back to the real estate. The teachers in Ireland, they can't afford to buy a house because the real estate is too expensive, right? So they make a demonstration to the government, you need to increase our salaries, okay? Uh, Spain, same, very big real estate bubble, and also, because the, if the rent and the housing price is going up, people want a higher salary, okay? Inflation and labor costs. Germany actually has one of the best housing markets in the world regulated housing markets. German government decides that price of the house. So a US investor wanted to buy a house in Germany. They told him the price is $370,000. He said, okay, I'll buy the house. 
They agreed. The local government, local German government said, no, that's too expensive. You have to reduce the price to 330,000. Okay, do you understand? So the, the government wouldn't allow him to buy the house at this price. So the government stepped in and they forced him to buy the house at the lower price. That's one of the reasons they control the house price in Germany. Okay? If they control the house price, they don't have to increase the labor cost okay? as much. Do you understand? So uh, Germany also has rent controls in many cities. It means you can't increase the rent more than inflation. Do you understand? In Ireland and England, we have quite bad real estate and housing markets. London is one of the most expensive cities in the world to live. They can make the rent or housing prices whatever they want. It's not regulated. But Germany is regulated. Okay? Do you understand? You can't increase the rent more than inflation. Okay? Recently in Ireland, they brought in a program that just from this year, the rent is fixed for two years. You can't, landlords can't increase the rent for two years. Right? But I, in my opinion, other economies should follow Germany because we can see real estate is a problem in the, in the world, right? Germany and Austria have a housing market which is not based on ownership. Uh, it's based on rental markets, which is good for the modern society because a lot of people move around from jobs to place to place. So we don't really need a home ownership so much, right? But how can Germany and Austria have a good rental market? Because the government regulates, okay? The rent price is very cheap. You can rent an apartment in Berlin for very cheap, or in Munich, okay? So Germany, also related to price of rent and houses, labor cost is not going up much, okay? So who's more competitive? Who's getting more competitive? Germany, can you understand? Yes. Right, we keep increasing our wages. We started with the euro. We're in the same currency. If we increase our wages, one way we could do is we could make a weaker currency to even out the difference, even out the competitiveness. Okay? But actually, our labor costs went up and Germany's went down. And then on top of that, maybe the Germans are more productive, right? Maybe they're increasing their skills more. Okay, that kind of thing. So, kind of double problem. So, <coughs> this is the productivity. So, do you think you have enough evidence to make a decision? about what's going to happen to the bond interest rate in the future? Or don't have enough evidence? Okay, so first discuss, think about these factors. You're in 2011. What do you think is going to happen to the level of German long-term rates? Is it going to increase or decrease over the next year and why? So discuss with your partner. Is the interest rate on the German bond going to go up or down next year and why? Okay. Uh, we can look at the current price of the bond here. Right. Uh, <coughs> so we're in 2011, and the price of the German bond is... Here, it's zero, around 1%, okay? So, just we're at the end of 2011, the start of 2012. This is what we have to decide. What's going to happen to the Greek one? What's going to happen to the German one? So let's start with the German one. Okay, where is it going to go? This is the trend, it was 5%. It's now down around 1.5 or 2%, okay? What do you think is going to happen to the German bond next year? Where is it going to be next year? Here? Here, here, okay, get lower, increase or decrease first, and then why, okay? Is the interest rate going to go up or down and why? Do you understand the question? Yes. Thinking about the European crisis, or no, only thinking about the German economy? Now we're just thinking about the German economy first. Is the German but what affects the price of the German bonds? The, the safe haven might affect it, okay? But we're in 2011 now, it's three years after the crisis, okay, do you understand? Three years after the crisis, but maybe there is some, people might think the euro might break up, that could be one problem, right? But it hasn't, they don't seriously think that, right? Nobody seriously thinks at this time the euro is going to break up. 
So some people might think that, or people might think there's a 5% or 10% chance, right? The euro might break up, but it's a small one. But you're right, that could also be a factor. So think about the factors and decide is the, discuss with your partner and make a decision. What's going to happen next year? German government bond. This is what investors have to do in the real life, right? If you're working for the green pension fund, you need to do that in the real life. Okay? So you have to make a prediction. That kind of data. So look at the factors you wrote down, right? GDP growth, government budget, government budget deficit, right? Think about the ECB monetary policy. Think about safe haven effects, effective return in other assets around that time. So we're just starting with Germany now, right? Next we'll talk about Greece. This question is about Germany. What's going to happen to Germany, up or down? Why? Show of hands then. Hand, don't not put up your hand, right? So, who thinks that we look at these factors, maybe some are plus and some are negative? So, hands up, who thinks the interest rate will go down next year? Interest rate will go down. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who thinks it will go up? Are you guys listening? <laughs> deep in talk, deep in conversation. So let's try again. Who thinks the interest rate will go down? Who thinks it will go up? Okay, so let's look at each of these factors. Expected future output. What do you think? Good or bad? Good. Why? 
German have a high productivity. High productivity, low labor cost, good competitiveness. Other reasons? They have very good computer software for their car engines. <laughs> Another reason? Hmm? Any other reasons on output? They're, they're competitive, they have low labor costs. They're, they have expected GDP growth, right? The OECD expects their GDP to grow. What else do they have? Current account surplus. Current account surplus. Is a weaker euro going to help Germany or have a problem for Germany? Mm -hmm. Well, it can help their current account surplus, but it might make some problem with inflation, right? So, what about wealth? Do we have a lot of people who want to buy government bonds around the world? Generally, world wealth is okay. Yes. Are the Korean pension fund getting bigger or smaller? Korean pension fund is it getting bigger or smaller? Bigger, right? Government budget deficit. Is Germany okay here or has a problem? Monetary policy. Does Germany okay here or have a problem? Inflation. A little problem. A little problem with inflation, maybe, right? Yes. Inflation could uh, cause Germany to lose some competitiveness, right? In the economy. Germans really don't like inflation. Okay, the German savers are not going to be happy if they have inflation. Okay, uh, they think they, we said they resigned. One guy resigned from the ECB because they oppose the monetary policy of the ECB currently. Okay, even though their exporters might be happy because their exporters get a weaker euro, helps that. What about the safe haven? <coughs> Do you think investors will be getting more risk on or more risk off in the next year? From 2011 to 2012. Risk off. Risk off. You think the risk, the world is getting more risky or less risky? Less risky. Less risky. So then maybe they'll start selling their German bonds and buying stocks. What do you think? Buying. Selling bonds and buying stocks, or buying bonds and selling stocks? Buying bonds and selling stocks. Why? World, world economy is to get worse. So they want lower risk. Is the world in 2011? Is the world economy recovering or getting worse after the crisis? Hmm? Recovering. recovering, right? So what are people going to do if the world economy is recovering? Sell bonds and buy stocks, right? So that's one main negative, right? People are getting. They were. We saw German bonds. They were low, but now it's starting to recover, right? So maybe people will do that. Maybe, but you can still make the argument that the economy is not that good. But we saw the S&P 500 from 2011 to 15. S&P 500 went up a lot, right? So maybe people would say, S&P 500 is going up. Sell my German bonds and buy the S&P 500, right? Uh, expected returns in other assets, so we mentioned the S&P 500. So overall, you think this is stronger. They, they have a healthy GDP growth and a good government budget, so that's going to be stronger than any small inflation risk or or the economy is not recovering that quickly, right? World economy is recovering, but not like very quickly, okay? So we think German interest rate will go down. Okay, so then the next question is, what about Greece? Greece is currently up at 37%. It's almost, people are expecting a default, right? That's very high. Imagine you ask for 37% interest in one year, right? It's a lot. Don't you think so? It means that people think basically Greece is going to default in the future, right? So what do you think is going to happen? Is this going to get worse and Greece default? Or is it going to go, come, get better? Okay? Currently it's very high, 37%. So look at the details we looked at for Greece and try to make a decision. What's going to happen with this in the future? What's the direction of the interest rate? 
So think about the factors again, right? Some are similar as Germany, other ones are a little bit different. Show of hands, who thinks that the Greece interest rate will go down next year? Go down from 37 to 20 or 15. Hands up, who thinks it will go down? Who thinks it's going to get worse? Go up more. Okay, so the people, our decision is that we think the German interest rate will continue to go down and the Greek one will continue to get worse. Okay, so uh, we're not going to buy the Greek bond. Right? It means the price of the Greek bond will be going down, the price of the German bond will be going up. Right? Do you understand? Interest rate on, we already described before, interest rate on the bond goes down, it means the price is going up. So we can buy the German bond now, the price of the bond will go up next year. Sell it again, make a profit. Okay? The Greek bond, we're not going to buy because the price of the bond is going to go down. Interest rate goes up, the price goes down. down. Okay? The yields. Talk about the yield. Okay? So we made the decision to buy the German bonds. Okay? So why what about the expected future output in Greece? Do you think they're going to be increasing their GDP or decreasing? Decreasing. We saw the OECD said they're going to be decreasing the GDP, right? Yes. What else is affecting the future output? Down. Competitiveness. What about competitiveness in Greece? They have high labor costs, right? Maybe they're trying to reduce, but still high labor costs. Is it easy to reduce wages, people's no. wages? No. no. 
Wages are sticky. It means it's very hard. People is going to do a lot of demonstrations. So in Greece, there was a lot of demonstrations about that point. They're trying to reduce the wages, but everybody is demonstrating. Okay, that was still the argument this year. Still arguing about that. Okay. Uh, other factors for the output, the current account surplus. Does Greece have a current account surplus? No deficit. It's importing more than exports, right? What about the government budget deficit in Greece? Is it still spending a lot of money or is it saving money? Spending. Still spending more than it's getting in taxes, right? One of the issues for Greece is collecting taxes. Okay? Traditionally, in some countries, people like to avoid taxes, right? But actually, they've done research, and the more developed country is a country which can collect taxes more quickly. So that's why sometimes it was an advantage for countries to go to war. Countries like Japan and Germany, when they went to war, they had to really make an efficient tax collection system. Do you understand? Because if they didn't collect all the taxes, they couldn't survive in the war. So during the war, they made a very efficient tax collecting system. So they're very good at collecting taxes. So if your country is very good at collecting taxes, it helps your country to uh, improve, right? So people should pay taxes, and the government should collect properly. But countries which don't collect much taxes don't tend to do that well, right? Uh, monetary policy. What about monetary policy factor for Greece? Do you think the ECB is going to continue to buy the Greek bonds or not? That's an important factor here. You guys said you think the, it will get lower. Is this why you said it might get lower? So the ECB is currently allowing them to be at 37, but maybe they'll change their mind and start to buy more bonds, right? And then, what about safe haven? Risk on, risk off? Mm -hmm. So you think that affects Greece that much? No? Maybe investors are still a bit risk off after the crisis, right? Getting more risk on, but maybe still don't want that much risk to invest into Greek bonds, right? So we can think about that one too. Okay? If the economy was, again, if there was something suddenly happened, the economy was really picking up quickly, then maybe people would say, yes, Greece will get some advantage, so let's buy their bond. I want to take the risk, but not, not really happening like that, okay? So then, uh, obviously, we've passed that time now, so what you, I think what you summed up really did happen, right? Greece. Germany continued the same or getting lower. Today, Germany's interest rate we saw is 0.5%. Okay? Then in 2011, it was 2%. Greece ended up in the worst situation. It had to get the voluntary bailout okay? in the end. So after the bailout, Greece's debt was cut down. After Greece's debt was cut down, it had, its interest rate went down. Okay? And it's been going down a little bit since. Also, Italy and Spain got into bigger problems. So because Italy and Spain got into bigger problems, Greece got some advantage. The ECB started to buy more, buy more bonds, right? Because if Italy goes to the IMF, the IMF actually doesn't have enough money to bail out Italy. Okay? Italy has a population of 60, 70 million people, has one trillion debt in euros, so the IMF doesn't have enough money to bail out Italy. The only, who, the, what's the only organization that has enough money? The one that's able to print money, the ECB. So the ECB stepped in and started aggressively buying the Italian bonds, right? And then the investors stopped selling Italian bonds and started buying again. So the ECB has an unlimited money supply. So investors don't think they could fight that well against the ECB in that case, right? So the ECB was able to win that battle. But it meant it had to buy a lot of bonds of Italy and Spain and also Greece. So, uh, do you have any question about this case? Do you understand what affects the price of the government bonds? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you understand why Germany has a very low bond price these days and the core still have relatively high? Yes. Or the periphery still have relatively high? Yes. Once. Okay. 
So let's finish there then for today.